Welcome to another episode of The Closest Club. Today I am joined by attorney Pat Foley. Pat's a local Quincy attorney, born and raised in Boston. How you doing today, Pat? Good, Rob. How you doing, my man? We've been talking about doing this for a while, but it's good to be here. Excellent. Absolutely, man. Glad we made it happen. And uh, that's what it's all about. So, Pat, we'll kind of jump right into things, man. Tell us a little bit about your origin story, where you're from, where you grew up. Yeah. And now uh, we can get get into your career and everything else right after. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. For, like I just said, thank you for having me on here. Uh, you know, as I've grown my business and climbed up, some of the advice you've given me has been re- really instrumental. So anybody that you're around, that positivity always comes right out. Uh, I'm a Quincy guy, born and raised Quincy, uh, one of seven kids, uh, third of seven, five boys, two girls. I went to Archbishop Williams High School, and then I went to Suffolk University. Um, I took a couple years off after Suffolk, um, went back to law school. And in that time off, um, I worked at my family's bar and restaurant. I also worked for them through high school and college, uh, J.J. Foley's in Boston. Um, then went to law school, um, missed the bar the first time by two points. And that's actually an important part of the story as we get rolling. And then uh, went out on my own after I passed it the second time out. And uh, slow, slowly but surely, we've, we've grinded our way to really build a really good business. Excellent, man. So you said you're one of seven, Pat. Yep. You don't hear that every day in this no, generation. You don't, so, you don't. yeah, speak a little bit about what you feel that did, right? Did it make you more competitive? Was it a cool environment to grow up with a, a ton of kids in the house? It, like, how do you think that impacted you and has benefited you? It is probably one of the biggest reasons for how I am the way I am, um, whether it's being supportive. You know, we always we always went to each other's games. We always had each other's back. That was something our parents stressed from day one is you have your brother and sister's back no matter what. Love it. Um, so, yeah, so having the two older brothers uh, playing basketball and all that in the backyard, that, that, that built a toughness. You know, your older brother Mike putting you into the garage door making you earn that layup or your brother Matt, you know, when mom goes out grocery shopping on Saturday morning, you know, giving you a pile driver on the, uh, <laughs> on the uh, living room floor. And then me with my younger brothers on the other end doing it. But just yep. just that support system and, having, like I said, having each other's back and building that camaraderie and just it, – it, it, it really shaped who I am today. I see it, man, every day. So Pat and I go to the same boxing gym a couple of times a week, TMX. Yeah. You're there more than me, but he's one of the hardest working guys in the gym. Right. I'll be the first to tell you that, man, and I respect it. Yeah. And it shows. It really shows. I mean, the, the, the reason for that is, too, it's, I think there's a quote, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I just think it translates into everything you do. Love you it. Know, if you work hard in the gym, that means you're going to work hard for your clients. That means you're going to work hard on every phone call, every meeting that comes in the door. Um, you don't half-ass anything. Absolutely, man. So tell us a little bit about growing up, Pat, as far as sports and different things. I know you played sports coming up. Speak a little bit about yeah. that and how you feel that's helped you as a professional and what lessons you may learn on, on the sports field, on the court, that translate into business. That's back to competitiveness. Nice. Um, and anyone who will joke me is... They'll probably say I'm one of the most competitive people that, that they know, but I think there's worse ways to be. Um, played football, basketball growing up, you know, just um, running marathons now. Big part of that is our fundraising, giving back to the community. Um, it's just It just translates, again, into everything you do in life because you pick up those habits as a, um, as a kid, and you keep doing them throughout your whole life, and you stay consistent with it. But also I always think that when you're playing sports – um, if there's somebody I'm working with or somebody I'm looking to hire, that's a huge factor for me. And I'm going to tell you why, because when you're playing sports, right, you're not necessarily going to like everybody that's on your team, but you have to find a way to make it work with them. In business, you're not going to like everybody that you're working with, right? But you're going to have to find a way to make it happen, right? You're going to have to be able to take constructive criticism. And I think the big one is you're going to have to learn to deal with adversity and you have to learn to deal with failure, because I'll tell you one thing in my life is every time I've accomplished something good or something that's taken me to the next level in my life, at some point, whether it was a year, two years earlier, there was something I was trying to do to get there where I, I lost. Yep. But it's, it, it's getting back on the horse and finding a way to make it happen. And, and that's sports. That, that, that is 100% sports and that competitiveness uh, that gets drilled into you your whole life. Love it, man. So speak to maybe an example, Pat, of something that really pushed you to grow, right? Something that may have looked like a negative when yeah. you first started out, whether it was career, whether it was in sports, that you had to dig deep yeah. and just find a way to keep pushing to overcome. There's, there's a bunch of them. Um, one of my favorite songs, it's a, uh, and don't judge, it's an Elton John song. It's and all good, it, man. It's, it's the song. It's, it's the song at the end of Rocky <laughs> Five. Yep. There's a line in that song is, 
you had to lose so you could win. Mm, powerful. And that line for me, looking back, is every time something didn't go my way, it always ended up being a, a win. Whether, you know, going to BC High and not having that work out, but then going to Archie's and succeeding there. Whether it was not getting into a few colleges, but then getting into Suffolk and succeeding there. Or it was not getting into law school, but then finally getting in there mm. and then succeeding. Um, you know, not passing the bar the first time out, but then coming back and passing the bar. Yep. Starting your business and struggling a little bit early and trying to figure it out and then getting everything on the right path and really getting this thing rocking and rolling. So I think that, you know, those losses, if you have that character and that fortitude and that toughness, you know, that's going to shape you into the person that you are today. But that being said, it also makes you, gives you the ability to help those other people that are coming up behind you where you can give them advice and you can encourage them. No, so true. And I can speak to the same, right? Everyone thinks, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the path to success is a straight shot up. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of turbulence along the way. Yeah. A lot of things you got to overcome. You know, I failed uh, my, my second flip in, I had a massive loss and I had to find a way to either continue for it or, or not. And one of my buddies had asked me, he's like, so Rob, you just lost like 200,000. That wasn't your money. You got to pay that back and work it out. I was like, are you going to quit? And I said, man, I just got my Harvard education. You know, that was my response. And he was like, wow, it's like, that's crazy. But that's the reality, right? We can either let those tough situations break us or make us. Yeah. And, you know, the ones who succeed in life are the ones who find that that uh, power. And, and cop- we talk a lot about the influence our fathers have had on our lives. Rob, that we, yeah. we, we'll be here all afternoon <laughs> talking about this, pal. <laughs> let me ask you, do you feel that, you know, the way you were raised gave you the the determination, the discipline? Because I met your, your brother, a couple of your brothers and your family members, and it runs through the family, man. You guys are strong-willed people, hard-working folks, and you guys make it happen, and I respect it. Yeah. Do you think your father played a major role in that? I know we've talked about it, but speak a little bit about that. If Everything. You would. My, my father and my mother in their own way. My yep. dad worked 80, 90 hours a week. We never went without. Yep. He worked his butt off. You know, if we want sneakers, like, we had sneakers. If we wanted to play basketball, whatever, like, he made it happen. Having seven kids, that wasn't easy. My mom, chauffeur, cook counselor, whatever it took to, to, to make sure that we had a great life. But watching my dad, whether it was Thanksgiving night going off to work or Christmas Eve or, you know, two feet of snow out in the ground, right? He made it happen. And he was the hardest worker I know. And he didn't always talk about it. But I just think just watching him and the way he handled things, that trans, I think that transitioned over to all of us in our own way and whatever careers that, that, that we're in. Um, and just that he just he just... It's just all I can say is the best. And, you know, you talked about your dad, um, you know, being the electrician in that example that set. Like, I think our dad, right? Like, we could talk about your parents can leave you millions of dollars or they can leave your work ethic and a good name. And I think the fact that our parents gave us that, I think that's worth his weight in gold. Totally agree, Pat. And I think, you know, when you look at the world today, it's one of the things I see the most, like, in, in just dealing with, uh, you know, young agents coming on the team or a lot of young folks out here who kind of lack direction. I kind of look and see that a lot of times it was, the, you know, the, the family structure wasn't there. Right. Right. And so I really <clears throat> am glad you're speaking on it. And I think it's important for folks to know that just because, you know, you may not have had the, the ideal upbringing because it wasn't always perfect for any of us. You still can find a way to make it happen for yourself. And at the end of the day, your dad and your mom gave you the example, Pat. But you had to apply it and put in the work. Execute it. Yep, you, you had know. to execute. And it's, yeah. um, and I remember there's a, there's a, my dad, he, it's funny, as I get older, I just find myself more and more quoting him like every day. It's, it's funny. <laughs> you, you're the same way. Right. I'm like, yeah. oh, my dad said that. It's just, I'm doing something a little bit different right now than what he did. But I compare it to almost like, say, if you're an assistant coach somewhere, and then you go take your own head coaching job somewhere, you're running your own program now, but this stuff you're implementing from what you learned from them, and you're running it in your own business. Um, you know, It'd be at my dad, Thanksgiving night going to work or Sunday night. Well, that's me being in the office on Sunday for five hours in the afternoon. Yep. You know, when, when everyone else isn't there, you're there. Um, yeah. And I feel it's the only way to, the only way you're going to catch people. Like my dad, like we're going to quote him again, but he said, every day I walk out of that door, I play like I'm behind. Love it. That's our approach. We're playing like we're from behind. Not getting blown out, but like no. three or four points in the fourth quarter. You have you, to have that urgency. Got to stay hungry. You yeah. got to stay hungry. Absolutely. I mean, I could have my best month, my best year. And that's that's great, and you know, and and I appreciate and respect the work that it took to get there. But I also know that if I don't continue that work going forward, I'm no longer going to be at that level. Right. You've got to you got to earn it every day. Hundred percent. That's yep. what that's what I said when we opened our new office right down the street. We're neighbors, by the way. Yep. 
Um, the fact that they have the both of us in the neighborhood, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> but um, I remember I had people come up like, this is beautiful. I said, well, now I have to keep it. Yeah, that's right. Um, or if I get hired for a new job, I said, well, now I have to go earn it. Exactly. You need that mindset yep. because you don't want to be a flash in the pan. And, but even how I, I hear how you handle your clients and I hear, you know, the people that we interact with where even if the deal doesn't work out, you have that long-term business mentality where you want to be in the game for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So if a deal doesn't work here, well, it's all right, well, I made a relationship with this guy. He knows who I am. We'll see him again. Right. Rather than right. burning a bridge when something doesn't work because you're, you're so short-sighted. Yep. No, great point, Pat. And you're the same, right? We both realize and respect that it's really about the relationships and when we can add value. I can't always add the best value to a given situation. You know, I may not be able to provide the best terms on a specific deal. I want to see my borrowers, though, win no matter who they're with. So. Right. If I, you know, this time it doesn't work out, no worries. Come back to me when this, you know, it's a different scenario where I may be the person who brings the most value to yeah. you because it's about long-term growth. And I see that in your business as well, the way you, you run your legal business yeah. and the way you deal with your customers, man. But even uh, like I was telling you before we went on, um, you know, you two years ago, you made a comment to me. Now, you, it just goes to show you, you never know who you're interacting with. You never know who you're talking to. Yeah, you know, I'd see this guy in the gym couple days a week big smile on his face always positive high energy right i didn't know what he did he didn't know what i did but you start talking to people and you get to know them a little bit and you gave me one of the some of the best advice um i think anyone has given me up to this point and i took it and i kind of 10x it it was you know if you're trying to like build a business relationship with somebody you can't sit there and just kind of wait for it to happen take the initiative be on offense and bring value somewhere and the value you and I give each other, I mean, we're always going back and forth. We miss a lot. Oh, yeah. We miss a lot. <laughs> but we have the same mindset where it's like, all right, we're going to hit on the next one. That's it. And we've hit a bunch. Absolutely, Pat. Yeah, you can't game. stop. Yeah. Yeah, just keep going. Keep yeah. going, man. Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. So speak a little bit about your charity. You touched on it earlier. Uh, what was the motivation behind what you do and speak about who you're helping yeah. and just the impact you're having? Because I really commend you for it, Pat. You don't have to do all of that. But it speaks to your character at the end of the day. And guys, I just want to state it. He doesn't publicly promote this or push it. And I've always told you, Pat, you got to get it out there just so it can inspire others, right? Yeah. To, to kind of know the kind of guy you are. Yeah. Not to say, oh, I'm the greatest. But at the end of the day, the impact, the positive impact you're having on kids yeah. who need that support. Yeah, it, it, it's huge. I, I, I think, you know, I think who much is given, much is expected. Um, we really, I really have an opportunity having my business in my hometown. Um doing projects and stuff in places that, you know, I, I've known my whole life, but now being able to impact um, groups and people and um, organizations right in my own backyard and being able to see that in action. Um, so I know like our marathon charity, you know, we've, we've raised over $400,000 for wow. Quin Quincy special needs baseball, Love it. Uh, soldiers, troops, cancer patients, um, you know, we've, we've helped with, uh, Quincy youth basketball with the basketball program. We've done some stuff for my, uh, my old high school, Archbishop Williams high school football team, few other schools. That's so important because I, it, it's weird. I remember as a kid, there was this outstanding guy and I'm not on his level right now by any stretch, but one day, maybe, uh, his name was George Burke, right? And he was an attorney and his name was on every, like, you know, baseball Jersey, basketball Jersey, you know, he donates scoreboards and stuff. And that always kind of inspired me. I'd be playing a game. I'd be like, that's kind of cool. I'm like, that'd be cool to have your name on a back of a, a jersey and a sponsor and to help the program out. So I think yep. as a kid, that kind of registered. Um, but now being able to put that into fortune and, uh, and seeing it happen and, and just, I don't know. I just feel as you're growing your business and you're growing, it becomes, now's the time for guys like us where we have to take over then and do these type of things. It's our time now because we're hitting our prime. Right. We're not climbing anymore, right? We're, we're always climbing. But we're at a point right now where we're hitting our career prime and we really, you know, as successful as we can and will be, we really have a chance to impact people's lives and make our community a, lot, a, you know, a better place. Absolutely, Pat. No, in, in addition to, I appreciate you sharing that, and in addition to the money side, you actually, and this is what I really appreciate and respect about how you do it, you give your time to these kids. You go and speak with them. Yeah. You share stories with them. It's not just, oh, you know, throwing money at it and, uh, you know, good luck. It's I'm going to tell you my story so that you know where I came from right. and what's possible if you guys are willing to make the sacrifice, work hard, and really just commit 
with the discipline. Well, that's that's the thing. You, you, you could throw money at it, and people don't know who the hell you are. Yep. Or you can go in there, you can get your hands dirty, go in there, and, and really impact. You know, because I look at what we're accomplishing right now, right? And if you told me 20 years ago or 10 years ago, even five years ago, I'd be here right now, you know, I always had a confidence and belief in myself, but there'd kind of be that, I, eh, you think, you think I can do that? Yep. But if you can maybe help somebody through that period, because I think early in my career, um, I think the mistake I made early in my career was I didn't ask for help. Mm. I assumed too much. Um, and I think maybe if I had done that, I'd, uh, I would have grown a little bit faster. So that's why I take, you know, whether it's, you know, giving kids advice or even talking to, you know, the people that work for me that are younger, or if you're working with a real estate agent or a mortgage broker, I really take that mentorship um, and giving advice and helping. I really think that's really important because I, I just see the difference it could have made in my career a little bit earlier. And if you can help somebody maybe, you know, get not get to the top, but get rolling a little bit in their career a little bit faster and, you know, help their quality of life, then, you know, what th- th- that's the name of the game. Yeah, no, that's a great point you bring up, Pat, because I feel like you know, when I was younger, I struggled with asking for help. Because, you know, and I tell a lot of young folks, I said, you know, I think as young people, we overvalue our intelligence, right? right. We think our intelligence is enough to get us to where we want to go in life. But that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, with mentorship, it's knowing how to engage a certain way in a certain environment. If, if you know, you've never sold a $20 million property before and you're like, oh, I'm smart enough to do it. Yeah. You might be smart enough, but are you going to be able to build those relationships to get there, right? right? Are you going to be able to manage that transaction with a lot of the unknowns yeah. for the first time around? Why not ask for help? It doesn't cost you anything, yeah. right? So I think as young men, we struggle with that. Yeah, oh, huge. And I, and I think my issue was with doing that was up to that point, up to the point in my business life, anything I've ever done, right, I always found a way to will it to make it happen. Right, yeah. You know, if yep. it's running a marathon, we'll will that last mile. If it's in school, well, I'll will myself through this test or I'll will myself, you know, in the gym. So in my head, I'm like, I'm too stubborn to ask for help and I'll find a way. Yep. And my friends used to joke with me all the time about it. It's like, well, if you put a wall in front of Pat, right, <laughs> he's just going to keep going through that wall. Yeah. Rather, if he just goes around it, yeah. he'd be all set. Yep. Um, so I think that was my issue was I thought I could will myself through anything. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it's, it's real, man. It, and I think it has to do with maturity. As young men coming up, we've got to mature and uh, just, just learn that and, and until we hit the wall, right? We hit the right. wall and then we're like, all right, there's a better way. There's an easier way. Let me ask for some help from uh, someone who may have been here before. The only difference is I hit the wall 15 times. <laughs> I didn't hit it once. We just keep going. I might have hit it 20. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's real. And, and I think it's great you touch on that, especially for the younger folks out there or anyone out there who may be struggling, yeah. trying to overcome something or hit a new milestone or jump into something new. Right. Ask for help. Look for a mentor who's done it before. See, I'll, I'll tell anyone, especially, like, uh, a newer real estate agent. So say if we're doing a closing for them, right, they'll come in. And I, I try to get everyone on the phone when a deal comes in. Just, I, I think every, I, I think, you know, technology is wonderful, but I still think, you know, between text and email, and I just don't think you can replace picking up the phone and having a conversation with somebody and getting to know them a little bit, seeing yep. what makes them tick, um, putting a name with a face, a voice and all that, make it personal. Um, so you get them on the phone and I can kind of gauge if they just stand out or whatever, but I always, I always use the analogy with them when we're talking. It's like, listen, You've got to this point in your life, you're smart, mm-hmm. right? You know what you're doing, but you don't want to get into a situation and make a silly mistake and have people not think that, like, you're qualified. And I always use the analogy of, say you got out of law school, right? And you know the law inside and out, right? You're going into your first trial. you got the questions down. You're, you're ready to rock, right? You walk into court, but you don't know where to stand, <laughs> right? But you're afraid yeah. that you're going to look stupid. Yep. By asking ask. that question. Yeah. So you don't, you go up there, you stand in the wrong spot. Now, all that good stuff that you have going for you, they're not even going to listen to it right now because you yeah. were afraid to ask a simple question when everyone knew that you were qualified because you got to this point in your life. So I say, if there's something simple, ask. We can nip this in the bud and we can really, you know, go forward and help you with your career. I love that, Pat. So let me ask you, was there ever a time that something like that happened to you that gave you this, this realization because that's great advice that you give to these younger folks. But did you experience something that kind of caused you to oh, make yeah. that connection? Oh yeah. What's the saying is experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Experience is what you gain when you don't get what you want. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I don't ask. 
Yep. I'd go in there, bowling a china shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then yeah, especially uh, some of the zoning stuff we do. Yeah, um, so we we do we do the pro- the zoning projects and we do the closings with the buyers and the sellers. But yeah, you go to a different city in town, especially earlier in my career. Uh, I wouldn't ask. Yeah, and then they'd ask you a question and you, and you got caught cold. Yeah, yeah. But again, back to you know, you know, you had to lose so you could win. I love it. In right? in the the fact that you share that advice with agents and people you're interacting right. with, it it definitely makes for a better transaction. It allows them to grow. But more importantly, it makes them comfortable with you. Right. And comfortable with the process. And now you're building a relationship yeah. because now they know they can come to you and not get judged. Right. And can ask things that, you know, they should know, you know, based on maybe what it looks like from the outside. Right. But they may not know. So right, right. I love that, man. That's that's great. That's great. Nice. Excellent. So speak about uh, what you do, Pat, day to day. You know, you mentioned you're a zoning attorney. I kind of know all the insides here. You're yeah. real estate, you real estate law. Yeah. But speak to what you do and, and really what makes your firm different. What makes you our guys firm, are doing some really what, cool things? What makes our firm different? I'm going to tell you. Well, first off, I'm not going to tell you everything <laughs> because I'm not giving you the playbook. Yep. Um, because there is a lot that separates us. Um, I think the way that we look to our referral partners, mortgage people, real estate agents, um, I think the way that we really look to help you out going forward Mm. in your career. Um, And I always say it's, we could do a deal together and I could give you two Celtics tickets and tell you to have a great time at the Celtics game. And we love doing business with you. Or, you know, I could see your personality and be like, well, you know what? You might want to meet these three people. And then you set Mm. up those three people and now they're doing business together. Right. Um, So looking for value and putting people together. I think that's what we do best. Um, I think, we're very good at finding opportunities um, for people that we do business with, whether it's off-market listings, um, potential projects, bringing it to them and seeing if it's something that they want to do. I know it's a hustle, it's, um, but that's something that we pride ourselves on. It's, it, it's always be on offense, always be around the ball, which is hustling, Yep, right? And just looking for those opportunities to try to help the people that you do business with. Um, and I think people respect that when you do it. Man, I'll tell you, Pat, that's talking about bringing value. That's taking it to a whole nother level. You know, and I can speak firsthand. You found me deals. You know, you sent me borrowers. We've done a lot of business together yeah. because you're committed to that. That's not just lip service. You guys are actually doing that right. consistently. And that, that isn't easy. So I definitely want to recognize you for that. And I can speak firsthand that, you know, working with Pat and his team has been a, a pleasure they're top-notch attorneys in Quincy and beyond. Yeah. You guys are here locally. I know you're zoning experts locally, uh, but I know you guys do a lot more than that. So Yeah, yeah we, no, we, do, we do our real estate closings. We're down the Cape. We're down the nice. South Shore. We're in Boston. Um, yeah, and, and in spite of having a down market this year, you know, we're having a great year. Um, and that's something that I'm really proud of. And it's not bragging. It's, it's something to take pride because it's a credit to building those relationships. Those relationships that you built maybe 24 months ago or – 18 months ago, but staying in it, staying consistent. And you said that word consistent. I think that's, that's my number one word every day is consistent. Be consistent in everything that you do um, because it, it's all going to compound. Excellent, Pat. So speak to that, right? The consistency piece. Is there anything in your life that you are consistent about or you have a routine you follow? I think you see it. it. <laughs> I think you see it, man. I see it. It's not for me. It's for everyone else. It's important yeah. to share it, man. You, I mean, you're religiously committed to what you do. So kind of speak to what your da- I, I, da- daily I, I, routine I, I looks like. I think we are religiously committed to everything we do. Yeah. Um, wake up. We bang out a couple hours of work right, right out of the shoot in the morning. Go to the gym, work out for 90 minutes, uh, two hours, right? I'll see you yep. there. Um, office, get some work done. I mean, I write everything down. And, and it is a joke with like, it's, I get sheets of paper. I know we get the notes in there the you phone, go. but yeah. I'm an old school. I like the notebook and... You know, there's things that we got to do every day. And every Sunday afternoon, we're, we're putting down our task for the week. You know, and that sheet of paper by Saturday night better be all crossed off. Those are the things that we have to do. But there's stuff on there that's personal stuff. Like, hey, we got to get a certain number of workouts and we have to get, you know, read a little bit. You know, yep, that type of stuff. But then there's the business stuff where it's like, all right, this week we have to talk to this many people. This week we have to try to make this many contacts. You know, we have to do at least two social media posts. But... All that stuff, doing that over the last four years, yep, 365 times four, we do it every day, right? That That's going to add up, especially the contacts, going out and trying to meet people. And, um, you know, if, if you're doing at least two, three good ones a week over the course of four years, I mean, that's 
It's a lot of people. It adds up. It adds up. And I'm very similar in that where I have certain goals of people I need to contact, number of people I want to reach out to, meet yeah. with, do things like this every week. But it sounds like, Pat, you found a great way to create self-accountability, which is, is not easy. But, you know, do you feel that because it's become such a habit and such a routine, it's almost like automatic for you yeah, now? It's, it's not negotiable. Right. Yeah. It's, right. It's, it's, it's just that routine. It's, and I get thrown off my game. Like, I might leave my notebook at my office. Like, I'll get my coffee <laughs> in the morning. I'll go home and get it and bring it home. Just because yeah. it's like I'm very, like, routine oriented like that because I see how it's worked. Right. And I'm afraid if I, like, you know, I, I, I get off that path a little bit, that all that momentum that we've built up that, you know, we could lose. You know, we won't, but it's in my head that it's going to happen, you know? So, yeah. I mean, then it's every day, boom, seven things I got to do today. And it's just like, we're constantly writing. <laughs> I love it, man. No, the one thing I always say to, to folks, Pat, there's only 24 hours in a day, right? Yeah. And in order to really optimize that and maximize it, you really got to think about it. You got to plan it out. You can't just be flying by the seat of your pants. And I right. think a lot of folks approach entrepreneurship, owning your own business, where they think you have all this perceived free time. It's, it's quite the opposite. Right. We've got to squeeze more into our days than most folks to make sure the business not only survives, but it grows, right? It, it continues to thrive. Well, that's the thing. And you just nailed it. You made a great point. It, it's doing the business stuff. You know, the nine to five, there is no nine to five, but doing the nine to five stuff, well, but then you got to go to that event at 6.30 at night till 8, 9 o'clock. Or it's going on a Saturday morning, going into the office to let the cleaning lady in. Or doing your yep. banking or talking to your accountant. And it's just not straight, you know, 9 to 5. And, you know, Friday at 5 o'clock, we call it a day and we'll check in Monday. Yeah. I mean, yep. it's, but we've made that decision. I love it. We've made that decision. And now that we're in it, you may as well. Now that we're in the game, you may as well win the game. Right? Um but I, I, I know I could speak for you is I wouldn't want it any other way. I couldn't just be straight nine to five in a cubicle and go home Friday and check back in Monday and just go through that. It, it's just not for me. I did it, Pat, and it didn't work for me. It didn't. I tried. I did it for eight years. And it, it just, I was at Stop and Shop headquarters. Okay. Right Quincy here in Center? Quincy Center. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Back. Yeah, no, I never went back, man. I mean, I, I, I gained a lot of experience there. I, I did see how the corporate environment worked. Met a lot of great people. The number one of those people being my wife. So I met her there. You her at Stop and Shop? I met her at Stop and Shop. Yeah. I was the yeah, procurement buyer. She was a business analyst. And uh, that's where we met. And uh, we never looked back. Oh. Yep. And now she's full time with me in the business. So. I know. I know. She's, she's an amazing woman. Great mother. Yep. And uh, I mean, you're, you're a great dad, too. I see this. I see your oldest with soccer. And, you know, you're. Your uh, your youngest daughter plays with my niece, which we figured out. We didn't, right, we didn't it's crazy, know that. man. That's a fundraiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's wild. But uh, but yep. no, and you're always, you know, you're always so involved with them, and, that, and that's a credit too that you're able to juggle, you know, the twenty four seven, you know, requirements of running a business, but the family thing too, and and not lacking in that because that that that's that that's the most important job you'll have. Absolutely, Pat. It's a lot of late nights, I'll tell you, man, yeah. <laughs> and, and early mornings. But this is what we do it for, right? It's right. The investment for the future and the stuff we believe in, man. Right. So Exactly. Yep. So talk a little bit, Pat, about when you kind of developed the level of discipline you have now. Were you born with this level of discipline in high school and everything I else? Say, or when I would you say my, my level of discipline started like end of high school. Okay. And it trickled into college. But I think a lot of it, it and it was all like – you know, between the work and whatever it was else that was that you were doing, I felt it all like intertwined together. Mm. Uh, and I felt the last four years, three or four years, especially with my business, I think I've taken it to the next level with it, where I become like a psycho with it. Um, it's all good. That's what it takes, man. You got to be obsessed. Well, because you see it's working. It's exactly. And once you yep. see it's working, you stick with it. Um, right. So I'd say, I'd say I've always been pretty disciplined my whole life, but I think I've gotten a lot more discipline, a lot more, you know, more so the last couple of years as well. I'd say, uh, I'd say coming out of COVID. Coming out of COVID, okay. Yeah, because I'm going to, yep. uh, I think it was the first time in my life, really, I had all this extra free time. Mm. So I just threw my nose in books, and I just tried to find ways to get my business to continue to grow. It was, so like we just said, like, you're stuck in the house all day. So why yep. not use this as an opportunity to grow and get better? Exactly. Rather than sit there and watch every Netflix documentary and be drunk by 2 o'clock in the afternoon every day, right? Sounds like you know a couple of folks who did that. Yeah, oh, yeah. That yeah I know you did too, right? <laughs> Right. We all did, man. It was wild, wild times. But let me ask you this, Pat, any special mentors or networking groups that have kind of were instrumental in your life? And I know we talked about our fathers. It could be your dad. Oh, it's yeah. if, what, anyone, mom, including mom and dad are number your one. Your parents. Yep. Um, my older brother, my younger brother. And I think everybody in their own way. Okay. 
um, networking groups. Quincy Chamber of Commerce has been phenomenal. Mm. Um, I do a lot of work with them as our business has grown in the city, um, especially on the development side. Um, Tim Cahill, he's the, the head of it. He's good. He's always good for a phone call um, to ask questions and stuff. Um, I think fellow lawyers, um, I, I think the key for the networking part, and this is where the game changed for me a little bit, and it took me a little bit to figure this one out, was we talked about running into walls. I feel I started my business, and we did a little bit of everything the first few years. Around 17, 18, I, I get into real estate, right? That, that's going to be our focus, right? And I feel I chased business a lot. I chased mm. business a lot with people that were doing it for years. And I would meet these people, and I'd get down on myself because they wouldn't be using me as their attorney. And it took me a while. And, and all I was here was, oh, Pat's a great guy. Pat does a good job. In my head, I'm like, well, if I'm that great, why don't you use me? <laughs> right? Yeah. But then as I took a step back, I said, well, let's look at it this way. You know, they've been doing this 20, 25 years, right? They have their team established. But, Pat, let's do some self-reflection here, right? Everything you've ever done in life, you've kind of been a leader. So why are you, like, begging to sit at their table when it's full? Mm. Go make your own table. Go build your own team. And that's what I did was I tried to find people that were in a similar career stage as me, right, link up with them, and we can grow our businesses together. And I could be their guy for the next 25 years. Then let me tell you what's happening now is some of these other people where, you know, I did have a good reputation with and, and get along with, their guy's retiring. So now I'm getting it on that end too. So, I mean, it's just, that, that's, uh, that, that's the way I've networked. And, um, and I think that's really worked. Um, and, and watching other people's businesses grow with me. And mm. that's been pretty cool too, because I know there's a couple of agents that we do their closings for. Watching them two years ago, you know, we do three deals for them. One of them was like 17 deals last year. But now wow. we're networking back and forth with each other. Like we'll be sending each other properties and we'll flip them over to a couple other guys. And then we just get it rolling. You can build the team together, you know? And then you put, then you put the people in the network together. Yep. And now every one of the circles rolling. <laughs> I love it, Pat. That's great the way you shared that, man. It's funny because coming up early on in my career, I was very similar where I didn't really have many mentors. Yeah. I ended up getting one or two key mentors along the way. But early on, um, it was a lot of agents I would meet that were more experienced and just would kind of drop gems and share advice like, hey, you should do this different. I remember one agent specifically, um, she was like, anytime you get a listing, it's like you got to put your flag in the sand and mark your territory. So send a letter to everyone on the street or a postcard, get a sign out there, door knock, just introduce yourself, yeah. invite them to the open house. Like you want this to be your chance to advertise yourself, to get out there yeah. and touch folks who otherwise wouldn't know you and you have credibility because now you're selling one of the neighbor's homes. And if it goes well, now you're kind of building up that goodwill that's and the, making those connections, that's a man. Hunt. You, you make a great point. And I can go to one instance in my life, especially um, on the zoning side of things. We did one project down here in Quincy. And you talk about building credibility, right? I remember we were at an event. We just got nine, nine units approved um, for this gentleman on one end of Quincy. And he is a great guy. Um, great personality, right? Mm -hmm. So we're walking around the room. He starts introducing me to everybody. But oh, it was, powerful. But it was, hey, Pat did this for us. Exactly. And yep. I remember sitting there. So the first two people we go up to, uh, all of a sudden, Mr. Who Can't Shut Up, right, is yep. shy. <laughs> so it's all awkward. I'm standing there. And he gives me a nudge. He's like, come on, Pat. He's like, get with it. He's like, you come to the office. All you do is talk. <laughs> and now, but then, boom, then we got rolling. We started going around the room. But it was yeah. that credibility and having somebody plant their flag. Yep. This is our guy. He did X, Y, and Z for us. He can do that for you. Yes. And I, I swear that is one of the pivotal moments, too, that helped us grow. I love it, Pat. I, I got a similar story with one of my clients early on. You know, I, I sold this guy uh, a house. It was represented as a buyer. And I didn't know really, you know, the influence he had. But he was like a big-time deacon in a church in Cambridge. Yeah. And he's like, Rob, you got to come to church. You got to come to church. And I'm like, all right. You know, and eventually me and my wife kind of, you know, we said, all right, let's just go check it out. Whatever. Yeah. You know, he keeps he keeps asking. He's a good, nice guy. So yeah. we go check it go out. Go for an hour. Right. Get breakfast after. Exactly, man. So he introduced me. We go to the church and service finishes. And he takes me around everyone in the church. Yeah. Introduced me as the guy that got him the best deal on a house in Somerville. This and that, man. I, I gave out cards. I closed like that year, like 200000 worth of additional business yeah. just from going to that service with him because he was like a deacon you know yeah. up there in the church and uh, it was a pretty affluent church wow. and uh hope you, you pull extra in the little <laughs> basket <laughs> right absolutely but yeah man it, it's powerful right and i tell my agents and you know younger guys in my office and girls on my team that 
that is the most powerful networking. It's going into an environment where someone is respected, yep. someone you know, someone who trusts you and you did a great job for, because yep. they're going to introduce you as the guy that did this uh, amazing work. Rob, you absolutely nailed it. I'll yeah. say that to people all the time. Is I'm like, some of these big networking events are a giant waste of your time. Right. Because it, 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 it's so artificial. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know you. You don't me, know me, but hey, let's do business together. Well, I've known you five minutes. I think what you need, and you just said it, is you need like that middleman. You need to go to an event where I might not know you and you might not know me, but you know, hypothetically, Steve over here knows us both. Right. And Steve can vouch for the two of us. And then we build that relationship that way. That's your best networking. Yeah. And I love the fact that you bake that into your business model, Pat. Yeah. It's going to serve you well. It already has, and it's going to continue to serve you well. Right. But you t- took that concept. The way you just connect us, connect me and other folks together, yeah. we we're all doing business together and right. we're all coming up together, man. But even that, um, but that, but you try to do that with other people too now, where you, you kind of, you know, hype them up and you build them up where it's, you know, this person's the best mortgage person around. They did right. a good job. We saw them do X, Y, and two. Like with you, like yeah. I'll talk about the deal with Noah. I'll be like, this guy did it in 24 hours. He was back, was against the wall and he got it done. But that's powerful. It is. It is. And, and it, it allows us to. You know, share these stories that show the impact we've had in a positive way. Right. Yeah. No, it's good, man. I love it. Love it. So I want to kind of jump back into the personal side, Pat, and uh, ask if you would kind of reflect a little bit and speak on what advice, if any, you'd give to your younger self. And and really, the goal of this is to kind of help folks who might have be in a tough place right now, yeah. kind of starting out. I might feel stuck in their career because you kind of cross the chasm. Your business is growing. You're very successful. Um, but as you spoke on earlier, it wasn't always that way. So yeah. what advice would you give to your younger self or someone who might be feeling stuck in their career, whether it's real estate, attorney, whatever it may be? I, I, I love that question. Um, cut yourself some slack. Mm. Maybe yep. give yourself a pat on the back once in a while. Um, don't beat yourself up too bad because we're very type A people. Yes. And you could be your own. It's funny. I saw a quote one time. It was like, if somebody else talked to you the way you talk to yourself sometimes, it wouldn't end well for them. <laughs> right? I love that. So true. So true. Um, yeah. And ask for help. You know, stay true to who you are at your core. What got you to that point where, for instance, we talked about like, you know, me, you know, kind of like, oh, my God, this guy won't use me and getting all sad or whatever. I was never like that. So why are we going to get like that now that, you know, we're here as a professional? Mm-hmm. So go to what got you to the dance. And that was being on offense. Working, putting in the work. Um, yep. Always put the work in. Don't quit. Stay humble and get back. That's great advice, Pat. I love that, man. I, re- I remember it was a time I was struggling in my tw- late 20s. We're really kind of f- trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. Yeah. And I was like kind of Googling like, you know, just different motivational speeches and things. And I came across an article that was called The Myth of Talent. And basically, it's a story of a guy who, you know, had kind of struggled all his life, never really fulfilled his potential. And um, he ended up getting a terminal illness, what he thought was a terminal illness, but he ended up getting cured um, along the way. But it was it, it was a time where he was just alone in the hospital for like months and months and months. And just he started really reflecting on life and what he wanted to do and what was stopping him. He, you know, he, he had a realization. He's like, why am I not doing the things I wanted? Why, not, why don't I have the life that I want, I want to have? And he was really hard on himself. He felt he didn't have the talent. He didn't have the skills. And, you know, through that time in the hospital, you know, spending the time in the hospital, he realized he always wanted to be an artist. And he said, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to just put everything I have into learning how to become an artist. And he just started drawing and creating this artwork that he, you know, desired to do. And it didn't what didn't start well, obviously. But right. over time, he became one of the best. He, he and, it, and it, he really kind of shares the story um, to really encourage us to realize that, you know, we might not be at the same talent level as other people or, you know, might not have the skills others have. But if we're, we commit to consistently working hard and, and making it happen and just piece by piece, yep. you're going to get wherever you want to go. As long as you, can, you stay in the game. Right, right. And, and, and every day you just try to get a little bit better. Correct. Just take a little step better. And yep. you, you're not going to notice it on the day to day. You'll look back a year, two years later, and be like, Jesus Christ, like, we got pretty far. You know, we, we've really made some headway, and we've gotten pretty good at this. Absolutely, Pat. And, and the other big point, and that's what you, you touched on, was he said the most important thing I had to do to get there was take it easy on myself. I had to cut myself slack. Yeah. I couldn't be too down on myself because it's counterproductive to struggling through a little bit and working through the hard times to, to find your best self. Right. Yep. And it's just, it's, it's, 
showing up like that. It's just like working through that, and that that was huge. I because I think sometimes you you know you, you could you, you could have given yourself a you know a better pep talk. You know, absolutely, man. No, I love it, Pat. Well, I definitely want to thank you for coming on today on the Closers Club. Thanks You're for a true me. closer, man. I want to recognize you for all the great work you do professionally. I love working with you as an attorney. Highly recommend this guy. And, uh, you know, I definitely know we're going to do a ton more work in the future. You know what the best part is, Robbie? We're What's just that? getting going. Oh, yes. Just we're the just, beginning. We're, we're just getting cooking, buddy. Just the beginning, man. So how can folks connect with you? Absolutely. We're uh, uh, Give me a call on my cell phone, 617-645-5832. <laughs> uh, call or text. But, you know, we're on Instagram at Pat J. Foley. Um, attorney Patrick J Foley at gmail.com. Um, link up, link up which is that way. Um, you can reach out to Rob. Rob can link us together. But uh, no, we look forward to you know helping you, whether it's buying a house, selling a house, hopefully in the near future, refining again. Yes. We need to get yeah. those back in the door at some point. <laughs> um, They're coming. And construction projects as well. Um, like I've said, we've done a lot of great work in Quincy, some stuff in Boston. We're doing a little bit in Weymouth now. Um, nice. And there's a few few in Quincy that I'm really proud of, especially the Dunkin' Donuts one that we did, just because I actually had my first job out there as a kid selling newspapers. Crazy. Full old. circle. Full circle, Full man. Full circle, man. Yep. Um, but that's how you can connect with me. Um, and again, Rob, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know we've been talking about doing this for a while, but you're really you're, you're really a guy I look up to. Um, and you, you give me some great advice um, over the last few years. and. And like I said, I feel like we're just ready to get on a run right now. Absolutely, Pat. Likewise, and uh, one last thing, most importantly, how can folks support your charity? Because you're doing amazing work for the kids of Quincy, man, honestly. And uh, sure, how can yeah. folks support yeah, that? Yeah, by giving us a follow uh, on the Instagram. You know, we're always updating different stuff up there about the charities that we do. We do our big annual event every year that we brought back this year, first year back after COVID. It was amazing, guys. I was blown away. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I, I was nervous. It's funny. Every time I'm getting ready to drive in there, I'll, I'll text my sister or my Talk to my parents. What if nobody comes? Oh, it was a, <laughs> quite. It was a packed house, and we knew we were going to pack. Right, it, but right. That little don't always comes in. <laughs> um, no, but that's yep. huge. And then, uh, you know, all, all the different stuff we do with sports and stuff. So just just keep an eye out on that. Um, th- there'll be different opportunities to help out. Love it, Pat. Thanks again. That's another episode of the Closers Club. I'm Rob Nichols, Pat Foley. Thanks. Buddy. On, until the next one. All right. Ugh, there we go, man. Appreciate it. All righty.